Um, and that's all I have. Vice Chair Fox. Okay. Good evening, Democrats. Um, tonight, um, well, right now we're a little behind on uh, planning our old month. So tonight, we will accept nominations from the floor, or you can email them in for the Eleanor Roosevelt Award. And that is an elected official female. And the Harry S. Truman, the Buck Stops Here Award. And that's an elected male. The Democrat of the Year, that's male or female, if you think someone's worthy of it. And the Young Democrats usually uh, elect the Jeffrey Worshaw Award, and that's done at their usual meeting. So at this time, the floor is open for nominees for the Eleanor Roosevelt Award. Okay, out front on the table, we have information on all the awards, and we also have listed uh, the persons who have received this award in the past five years. So if they have received it in the past five years, uh, we, we would like not to, to um, nominate those persons again. Okay. John Reiskin, is it five years or three? I'm sorry. Okay, the next three years. Please forgive me. So we have a list of all the persons who have received these awards in the past three years. And uh, the floor is now, now open for nominations. And if you don't have one tonight, you can always email me or Chair Robert, and we will vote at our next month's meeting. Are there any nominations for the Eleanor Roosevelt Award tonight? And these are for any elected officials in 2012. Um, Linda Bash. I'd like to nominate Leonetta McNeely. Second. <laughs> All right. Any other nominations? <laughs> Susan Foster. <clears throat> Any other nominations? Oh. <clears throat> and if you have other, oh sorry, go ahead back there. I'd like to nominate the other Oh, somebody did already. Oh, okay. I think. And if you think of anyone else, you can email chair at latchwithems.org. Um, okay. Are there any more nominations for the Eleanor Roosevelt Award? Okay. If not, we'll move to the Harry S. Truman Buck Stops Here. Are there any nominations for the Harry S. Truman Buck Stops Here Award? That's a uh, male elected official. Any nominations? Von Frazier is not eligible. <laughs> Any other nominees? Oh, yes. Oh, like nominate Chuck Chester. Chuck Chester. Very good. I think Chuck got it. Any other nominations? Sarah Lee? Yes. Mike Farley is uh, able to be nominated. I would like to nominate him. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Okay. Mike Farley. And Hutch Hutchinson. I heard it's All right. So any other nominations? Did you come up with anyone else? Oh, Bob Carp? Lauren Pope. Ah, Lauren Pope. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay, if you have any others, you're welcome to email them to us. Okay, we'll move to the Democrat of the Year Award. Any nomination for Democrat of the Year? Information question. Yes, sir. Is this restricted to Gainesville and Elijah County? Yes. yes, yes. Well, it could be a state person, a state representative, or um, somebody from Algin from Congress, 
is not restricted. We have given to um, <coughs> Congresswoman Corrine Brown and um, I think maybe Bill Nelson and we've given to um, Karen Thurman. So it could be one of those persons as well. Just have to at least somehow be associated. I'd like to nominate Wayne Gilbert. Wayne Gilbert. Wayne Gilbert. I'd like to nominate Dick Nesbitt. Any other nominations for Democrat of the Year? Rosemary Christie. Go ahead. I think Cynthia has got it. She's gotten in the last in the past three years. <laughs> no. Oh, not Democrat. She got the Eleanor Roosevelt. Excuse me. Okay. Cynthia Chestnut. Any other nominations for Democrat of the Year or service in 2012 or before? Okay, if no other nominations, um, we will send uh, these out to you and they'll be ready on the ballot next next month. Mm -hmm. And if you have anyone else that, that um, you would like to consider, please email uh, Robert or myself and we'll have their names on the ballot for next month. And that's chair at elagewadems.org. Okay, thank you. Membership committee. Oh, sorry, I just skipped a bunch of people. Um, Terry and Gina. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, okay, it doesn't work. Well, I'm loud anyway. Um, I, I attended the uh, state Florida Democratic Party meeting myself and Terry. Um, did attend in April. And we did receive our Florida Democratic Party certific Certification of Compliance for Alachua County Democratic Executive Committee. And of course, we were first because Alachua is first. So a round of applause for everybody. <laughs> I will present that. And then um, we did things like approve the state budget and hear different presentations. It was a good meeting. And I look forward to continuing to serve all of you as state committee one. Um, that, of course, was the most important thing that happened other than the election here. Um, and I know we have an item under new business um, regarding a grievance that was filed. I have a report about a separate grievance, and I'm going to pass these around after I report on it. Um, you, um, the state party, without the knowledge of any of the local leadership, um, made a donation to one of our mayoral candidates when there were still two Democratic candidates in the race. They did not speak to any of the, of the local party leadership before making this donation. Um, we, would have, we would have cautioned them uh, against making such a donation until there was only one Democrat in the race. And in fact, um, we were quite upset about it, and we filed a grievance against the state party for taking that action. Um, I will read this to you, but I wanted to report it and, and pass it around so you'll see. Um, this is to whom it may concern. We are writing to file agreements in regard to two actions taken by the Florida Democratic Party. The FDP donated to one Democratic candidate, Craig Lowe, over another, Sherwin Henry, and the 2013 Gainesville mayoral election. And two, the FDP did not consult local party officials before taking action in the Gainesville mayoral election. These actions have damaged the Latour County DEC's relationship with the local African American community. We are requesting that the FDP Judicial Council investigate this matter to determine what occurred and to make recommendations to put procedure in place to ensure that it does not happen again. Thank you for your attention to these matters. And this was signed uh, by Robert, Evelyn, myself, and Jean. Um, we, um, simultaneously with, with filing that grievance, we spoke with party leadership and expressed um, our significant displeasure um, with their actions. Um, it, um, the chair, Allison Tant, um, advised me that she called Sherwin Henry and spoke with him in some detail, and it is my understanding that she apologized for that action. Um, it, I, I don't know what to say, I just have to report that this happened, and um, we filed a grievance and we hope that they will take action with regard to it. So um, that's all I have to report. I am going to pass this around so everyone will have a copy of that. Um, but this is not a business item, only a report. 
what, what was the date of the filing of the grievance? Um, it was approximately a week after the initial um, election. I don't have the exact date. Okay, that's all I have at this time. Thank you, Terry. Um, membership committee. Again, I'm standing in on Dwayne Gilday, Recording Secretary and a member of the Membership Committee, standing in for Suzanne Kiker and Sally Guthrie, who normally would present our new members for membership. And after careful consideration, we are happy to present to you, for your consideration, Sylvia McIntyre-Crook as our Precinct 26 uh, Precinct Committee woman. And if you'd like to say a few words about yourself so that we okay. know a little bit about you, that would be perfect. Hi, I'm Sylvia McIntyre-Crook. Always been a Democrat. Uh, I'm in Precinct 26 and was asked to um, allow myself to be nominated uh, by Jim Connor here. Uh, did a lot of work on both Obama campaigns in 2008 and 2012, uh, and uh, met Don then as we both worked very hard as chair neighborhood chair leaders. Um, other than that, I do architectural design and I paint. Like artistically? Artistically, yeah, like things you put on the wall. Spoils. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two kids, married. Anything else? That's perfect. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. All right. Great. Um, this is presented from the membership committee as a second in motion. All Sorry. in favor of voting her on to the DEC, please say aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> Good. I will give, um, I want to thank Representative Watson for coming. Um, you can now speak. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, let me start by saying I'm so very honored to serve you in the Florida House uh, as your public servant. And I know there's been many issues uh, we face, and I want to start by saying I, I was most excited to go to Tallahassee, and I talked an awful lot about bipartisanship and going to Tallahassee with much hope. And um, of course, it's different from being appointed and elected. It seems like bipartisanship only counts if you do something that will benefit the other side. I spoke on this when we talked about the Affordable Care Act, Obama Care, as some would call it. And I spoke on the floor, for those of you who may not be aware, on that issue. Um, and when I talked to them, I talked about growing up with my family who could not afford health care. And my father worked two jobs, so it was not one of these people that they think are lazy at home watching television. And my colleagues to the right advised me that they did not want to be a part of the debt ceiling and they didn't want to be a part of the debt that the president is putting us in. And that is so disingenuous because we have a $74.5 billion budget, $26 billion of that is from the federal government. I stated that on the floor. How come it is okay to take $26 billion for roads, economic development, things of that nature, but not $50 billion over a 10-year period to take care of over a million Floridians? We came up with a, a nice, cute bill that will take care of about 100000 as they would put it. 
I, we beg to differ a little bit in the house. But I want to say that going to Tallahassee certainly was an eye-opener for me. Um, I still will try to do things uh, with my colleagues to the right when appropriate, if appropriate. But certainly I see things slightly different. And one of the, my main reasons for feeling the way that I do at this juncture is at the end of session, nearly, they brought across a bill to the floor with the 11th hour, and I think, what, 90 pages, Michelle? Yes. <laughs> and they would not allow us to read it, debate it, discuss it, and they wanted us to pass it. Of course, it was party line vote with one Republican. Of course it passed because they needed two thirds. And when you look at the fact that now we have a raise for our teachers for the first time in years, let's give them a hand. We have a raise for our state workers for the first time in many years. One of my fellow Democrats saw me at an event, actually an event for Vaughn Frazier. It was only a handful of elected officials there. It should, the room should have been full because I cannot think of a Democrat he has not stood on the corner for. And let's give him an honor for it. And this fellow Democrat, which I will not call his name, he knows who he is, and he, if he wants to say it forward, I would be honored if he did whenever he would like to. But he came to me and he said, Mr. Watson, I just want to tell you that you did everything you said you would do during the campaign. Everything. And for that I felt most honored because I know that I would. But I also knew that I had an opportunity to prove to the people that I'm here for the people and the party. I knew that I came with issues. And I didn't tell everybody strongly where I stood on many issues because I wanted to go to Tallahassee and do what's right. And I wanted the people to believe in me for me as a Democrat. As my friend Ross Smith would say that I lost my mind for a few minutes when I left the party and came back immediately. <laughs> um, but I'm home. And before I just touch on a couple of our accomplishments, I know uh, time is of the essence. I know that we have experienced an awful lot of difficulties. When I ran for office, I experienced a lot of them. I was not pleased with a great deal of things and people. But you know what I did? I showed the people that I'm going to do what I promised to do, what I pledged to do. Now, I could have gotten angry and fought, fragmented us, Ruin the opportunity that we may have in 2014 with the governor, a veto governor, which we need to work heavily on. I didn't do that because I knew the bigger picture we face. And whatever issues we may have as a party, it is nothing compared to what they have who are opposite from us. It reminds me of a story when two people were fishing and a snake fell in the boat. Now of course, you know, most of us are afraid of snakes. <laughs> now you have a bunch of Democrats in the boat. Some agree, some disagree. Some are real quote Democrats and some maybe not be as real as the interpretation. Do we grab something and throw the snake out? Or do we shoot a hole in the boat and we all sink? We cannot sink, my fellow Democrats. Amen. We do have issues. We are a dysfunctional Democrat family, but we are family. And I'm hoping that we can, in the future, to deal with the critical issues that we face, unemployment, underemployment, 
the Affordable Care Act that we will continue to fight for because people will die if we don't. We have to fight those issues. Now, if we waste our times fighting each other, we can do that. Nobody wins. Nobody in this room. There will be winners. They're just not in this room. I had to say that because I did read about some of the things that we have been experiencing here locally, and certainly I've uh, had my issues and my differences, but every time I did, I met with those who were in charge, John and, and others, and we came to some level of understanding, and I think that's what we need to do now. I think we need to stop fighting. I think we need to look at ways to build Alachua County. The state will depend on Alachua County for the governor's race. The state will depend on Alachua County for what we are facing. So if we continue to fight each other, we will not get where we wish to be. Now, let me try to get on a happier note. <laughs> we got uh, a lot of funding for our mental health. Of course, University of Florida and other universities received much funding. Our education system received a billion dollars more than before. Still not at the level of 7 or 8, but it is more. And when I went to Tallahassee, I fought for our teachers, I fought for our unions. But there is one controversial bill, and, and Michelle told me not to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Y'all know me, I'm sort of stubborn. House Bill 999. Did I get some emails? Did I get some calls? Well, let me explain uh, that to you, because there were those who contacted me. Many of you who were here came to Tallahassee and thanked me for the efforts, and it's on record, the things I fought for. And soon as one bill, and I'll explain that to you, then I got that gotcha email. I knew it. I knew it. That Clovis, he's gone over to the right, he lost his mind again. <laughs> Nothing further from the truth. What I do know is, we had 18 Democrats who were agreement of this bill, and we had the entire Republican caucus in agreement with this bill. I was in the committee. What I did was, is offered an olive branch to negotiate with the sponsor of the bill. When this bill came forward, I can assure you, uh, it would have uh, nauseated most of you when it first came out. The health department was against it, water management district was against it, the trash haulers were, were against it, and all of them came together, and the FDP and the uh, federal uh, DP, all were against this bill. Now they all came together and support this bill because we gutted it, not at the level we'd like. We're not going to get 100%, but we gutted it. If you go back and look at the first bill, it was terrible. But if we do not on the left use some sense of negotiation and try to collaborate to bring something home, then they will run roughshod. They had the numbers. They had the numbers. All they need is five of us to have two-thirds. They had that. They had 18. So we negotiated. We took out the fertilizer issue. That was a hard fight. And many other issues that I received emails about and visit to my local <coughs> office. Luckily, I was still in Tallahassee. I can assure you that I am fighting for the cause. I know what this party stands for. I co-sponsored legislative uh, bills that will give equal rights to gay, lesbian, transgender. That's on record. I co-sponsored a bill to address our election reform. We got a little bit, but nowhere near what it should be, but a whole lot better than it was. And luckily, we have a supervisor of election who will do us right, and now they have the autonomy to do it. That may not happen to some of our sister cities and counties in the South. I had to touch on that bill because I don't run from issues and I don't run from controversies. But I want you all to know that you all have a legislator you can count on. This party has a Democrat you can count on. And if you have any questions as to my negotiation or the collaboration, please ask. I will explain. I'm happy to explain myself. That's what we should do as leaders. I am a public servant. And I always tell people the difference between a public servant and an elected official. An elected official 
would do whatever it takes to get elected. A public servant would do what it takes even if it means they don't get elected. And I think I proved that when I ran for office the first time. <laughs> I talked with um, you all yesterday and I stated I would give a brief report and certainly I will give a more detailed report uh, from Mr. Prather and Ms. Fox and congratulations on your, your victory well deserved um, and, and thank you all for having me also uh, Ms. Fox. Another one of our victories is the trigger bill. We stopped it. We stopped the trigger bill. And believe me, if there were not those loud Democrats like myself, Representative Pafford, Representative Stewart, and so many uh, to name, Representative Roussan, who will be our future leader, it would not have failed. And it probably will be back. We stopped the further intrusion on our public school system. Let's give them a hand, because that was a big deal. <laughs> and we also stopped the further intrusion of our retirement system. Mm -hmm. now, woo, woo, woo. One of the things that concerned me about that discussion on that bill is they stated that we are in debt because we're not 100% financially sound. Well, anyone who knows the retirement system and funds know that as long as you're actuarially sound, you're good. We are 87% actuarially sound. About third of any state. That's something to be honored about. And I talked to my colleagues and when I'm on the floor, I say my honorable colleagues to the right. Some are honorable and some may not be uh, as I would like them to be. <coughs> and I looked at the fact that I want to equate that to something that common folk can understand. What that says is if you're working and you have a $300,000 home and you're paying $2,500 a month, they're saying you should be able to pay that house off at any time. That's what that means. Actuarially sound means you better keep working and you better pay your bills. If we would have allowed them to stop the incoming state workers from getting in the system, the present workers could not have afforded it. And the ones who already retired would have been hit later. So we have to stop it now. We had increased funding for our elder care, uh, community-based home care as well. We also had uh, the, I, I would say, more funding for our schools, but it's still not at the level that it used to be. And I think, I don't know whether the governor looked at his poll numbers or he just have a change of heart. But he's, he's, he's our education governor, isn't he? <laughs> When he came in office, he thought education was overfunded, it was the worst system in the world, and, and I really get so uh, bothered, I like to use, I don't like to use harsh words, when they state F schools, A schools, failing schools. Amen. It's according to what you're evaluating them by. I don't see us as having any failing schools. We have a great public school system in the state of Florida. <laughs> we need to fund our public school system. We do not need to have private, and I, and I don't have a problem with private schools and public schools and charter schools. There's, there's, a room, there's room for that, but not at the detriment of our public schools. That is our primary responsibility. Those are things that I have been fighting for, for this body, for the caucus. I also told you all I will fight for jobs and job opportunities. That's when you will probably hear on some controversial things. But please ask me. I can assure you it will be something that will benefit us and the people. Uh, I'm not, I want to touch on one other thing before I, before I stop, and I know Elvin was giving me that look, so I better hurry up. Uh, <laughs> when you look at the, the, the natural resources, we have much more funding to protect our springs. Uh, more funding to protect the Everglades uh, to deal with stormwater issues and water reclaim, and that's going to help us greatly. Um, we understand Florida is a car sensitive state, and we have to protect our environment. Uh, if you look at my record, I've fought for a lot of those issues. 
uh, as well as other economic issues so that we can pay for those important things that we love. If we're going to have good social programs that pay for the state of Florida, we have to bring businesses here uh, uh, to pay for it, and hopefully we will continue to do so. I'm going to um, yield my time, but I will be here for questions if the body would allow, and I'm prepared to answer any questions uh, however the chair would like to uh, move forward. I'm Mark. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to congratulate our, my longtime friend and our friend, Representative Watson, for the outstanding job he's doing. Precinct 20, I'd like to make a motion on behalf of our board. Um, before the wording of the motion, just to hear the outstanding things he's done as a freshman legislator to get something passed, first of all. Uh, but for the work on the work on behalf of teachers and public servants, the trigger bill, the retirement system, and his sponsorship on bills to fix elections. I move that this body extend appreciation and gratitude to Representative Watson for his exemplary service. Thank you so much. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. on the Affordable Care Act at 8 o'clock, so I'm going to suggest that at 7.55 we adjourn. Is that, that's a motion? Yes, sir. Second. All right. Um, all in favor of adjourning at 7.55, say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? No. Very good. Um, we will move on. Terry, did you do campaign planning? I can't remember. Um, I, given the nature of what we have on the agenda, I'm going to ask for this matter. Very good. Let's move on. Mr. Chair, quick point of information to our state committee people. Does Representative Watson's district go into Marion County? Yes. I think we should also send our recommendation to the Marion County DC. All right. Well. Very good. Thank you. Um, we will move on to uh, announcements. Oh, yes. Club and caucuses reports. Committee, um, Lana is going to pass around a sign-up sheet for our two events this coming Saturday. The 11th is the Windsor Zucchini Festival, and then the 18th is the Newberry Watermelon Festival. So we need volunteers to help table our uh, stuff there. And thank you. Those should be going around. Thank you in advance for signing up. Um, any other club and caucus reports? Oh, yes. You can go ahead. Oh, Linda, you can go ahead. Okay, I'll be very brief. Just yell. I'll be very brief. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, Donald Democrats have fundraiser at Eastern Eatery, where um, Linda Carlisi, psychiatrist, donated to the establishment. And uh, we supplied all the refreshments, and we had a very, very successful um, fundraiser to for our PAC. So we will be prepared to support Democratic candidates upcoming. Thank you all. Thank you. Please, please support East End Eatery at the time. Well, I had it written out, but I'm going to make. I, I promised you 30 Pull seconds. Pull the mic here. down. Pull the mic down. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, we are excited that we are uh, forming, hopefully, a local chapter of the Environmental Protection uh, <laughs> Committee. It's going to be uh, a local chapter of the Democratic Environmental. Uh, caucus of Florida. They were just uh, certified last year, and that was one of the uh, one of two top items that came out of um, our retreat in February. And so I'm chairing that. My name is Beth Richardson. Uh, we finally found a home day to meet, and that's the third Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. at the Democratic Center. Uh, everybody's welcome. I've had a lot of uh, people telling me they want to be involved in, in, in uh, environmental issues. And uh, I would like to thank James Davies from the Legislative Committee and also 
Karen Apple from uh, the Democratic Women's Club for contacting me and hoping that we can do some things together. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are two additional caucuses that uh, possibly are going to get started in Alachua County. One is the Veteran Caucus and the other is the Faith-Based Caucus. So look out for information on both of those. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Chair. Morning, Mr. Yes. Um, what exactly... You can come to the mic. I'm sorry. I'll I know. speak loud enough from here. Um, I would like to know exactly what the faith-based committee, whatever, is going to entail. We can, I think the there's a... Faith me. Anybody who believes in Jesus Christ. No. Well, what if I don't? Okay. Join the call. Okay. We can have this conversation afterwards. I can have it now. I can see you have to put up on the Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. I've not recognized anyone to speak. We have a except for Ms. Lee. That says freedom of religion. So that means All right. You will address, you will address the chair, please. All right. Um, I just suggested that when people speak, they would please address the chair. She asked the question. I don't think you know what the hell the answer was. No. All right. Well, this has been a good meeting. Um, I think we can move on to new business at this point. Where I have. I'm sorry. Yes. It's announcements for anything that is democratic, or anything people might be somewhat interested in. Thank you. I did. Yeah. I'm late, so Thank you for giving coming. me this pro, um, position to share. I have two things. One, with f first of all, good evening, Democrats. <laughs> Secondly, um, Representative Watson, thank you so very much. I know everyone said that, but I have to say it personally. But I have two things from the school board. One, we are in the midst of strategic planning. If you've participated in years past, this is so very different from years past. We really, really and truly need your input. And so we've had, so far, four focus groups. But tomorrow night at Rollins Elementary, this is not invitational. This is open to everyone. Everyone should have a voice and be a stakeholder in what's happening for students in Alachua County. I need you to show up at 7 o'clock p.m. at Rollins or on May 14th at J.J. Finley, 7 o'clock, same opportunity. But I need to see faces. Some of you have participated in the focus groups thus far, and we thank you. But we need to have now anyone else who has not spoken up as to the changes, the concerns, the positives that we need to move forward for students in Alachua County. That's my first commercial. Second commercial, if you read your paper this week, you saw that Alachua County has students between the ages of 15 and 19, where we are fourth in the state. Leon, Gatson, and Hamilton County are the ones ab above us. But Alachua County is fourth in the state that we have sexually transmitted infections and diseases. We are going to work with the community, the medical organizations, but we need to work with you. So again, we are going to be mobilizing this effort. It's a grassroots effort, and we need your help. So that's commercial too. I'm asking you for your support. I'm asking you for your help. Everyone, as uh, Representative Watson and our illustrious chairman said, we need to work together. I'm counting on you. Thank you so much.
Uh, one announcement. Um, I, if you read the paper, you're probably aware of this, but I want to acknowledge it. Um, our chair received an award this this uh, last week from Macaulay Ford, and I think he deserves a big round of applause. <laughs> To the chair, we have a number of members from the Democratic Black Caucus that have come to address the grievance. And if you would, we would like for you to hear our report. Sure. At this time, I have a few words to say first, and then okay. Um, and I'm abbreviating my words right. so that you all have more time. We are under new business at this point. Um, friends, I um, I wanted to give you all an update um, with. The issues that have come up with the local Black Caucus, we have filed a grievance with the FDP. The facts are that the Democratic Party, from the National Party down to its local groups, clubs, caucuses, and committees, have a singular unifying purpose, which is to elect Democrats to office. Similarly, each organization within the party has rules re requiring that each group and their members support Democrats in contests for public office. And as the chair, I investigated complaints that the leadership of the local Black Caucus has been endorsing, supporting, and campaigning for Republican candidates against Democrats for a number of campaign cycles. In doing so, I determined that they have been in clear violation of their own rules and the rules of the state Black Caucus. And as the county chair of the Democratic Party, the responsibility to hold ourselves and our organizations to the rules clearly falls to me. And to that end, myself, the vice chair, state committee man and state committee woman, drafted a grievance to the FDP dealing, sorry, detailing their actions, asking that their charter be revoked. Um, if members have further concerns or would like to discuss things further, please don't hesitate to email, call, or pull me aside. Thank you. I'll go ahead and listen to, I'll allow one minute comments, which, which is my tradition. Um, and I'll go ahead and start with you, Armin. I'm Ervin Owens, President of the Alachua County Democratic Black Caucus. Uh, with the complaints and you've heard from your chair, I think he is in error. Democratic Black Caucus supports Democrats. The race that he probably is referring to is a nonpartisan race, which Democrat or Republican did not matter. The caucus as a group never endorses any candidate, be it Republican or Democrat during our debates or anything else. We support Democrats totally. Uh, the letter that I received from the Florida Democratic Party, I received on about April 28th, discussing some things and some allegations. Strong language was used against a number of individuals in the Democratic Black Caucus. Uh, I contend that a lot of untrue statements were made. I have come to as Mr. Watson talked about unity, and as he talked about working together as a party, we intend to do that and promote the general welfare of the citizens of Alachua County. I've come in this short time for one minute to ask that the individuals that from the DEC that initiated this letter rescind that letter, uh, apologize to the members that they have made derogatory statements about, because of that letter, the uh, integrity of our organization has been impaired. We will not be off course for supporting the citizens of this county and working towards the good for all the citizens of this county. We, and I refer you to 2001, in which the illustrious and great Rod Smith I'm sorry, supported your expired, but Paula I'm Delaney. No. My time has expired. I ask for a public apology from the DEC, as well as a written apology, and I ask for that letter to be rescinded. Thank you. Um, just a um, you can go ahead, Tara. Okay, um, I will keep this as brief as possible. <laughs> Okay, um, can you folks hear me in this room well enough? Yeah. Okay, my fellow Democrats, because that's what we are first and foremost, Democrats in this room. 
and we have to act like Democrats, which means we support Democratic candidates. That's our job. Now, everybody knows that in the last election in this city that Mr. Dryde was the Republican candidate and Mr. Lowe was the Democratic candidate. There was no bones about that. We all knew that. Anybody that says any different really doesn't know what the last election about for mayor was in this town. And I mean that with no disrespect towards any man in here, or woman in here too. We've had a lot of problems lately with a disputes in here. We've had uh, Democrats from different stripes that have opposed equality for all of Gainesville citizens because the good book or their ministers opposed it. We need to leave out of politics our personal home religious beliefs I'm sorry your time has expired Bye. and bring into politics the constitutional beliefs of the state of the city and of Democrats which means equality towards all and fairness to all and all our Mr. Washington the rule of law is what our form of government is founded upon you're a private organization but I believe you have agreed to follow the rule of law. And I'm going to ask questions in the beginning and not give answers. By what right does the Alachua County Democratic Executive Committee have to have four individual members who've now been characterized by some of your folks as just acting on their own, sort of rogue folks, on a Democratic Executive Committee piece of paper to attempt to bring uh, sanctions against a caucus that isn't under your jurisdiction. It's under the jurisdiction of the Florida Black Caucus. The rules of the Florida Black Caucus clearly, and the Democratic Black, the Democratic Party of Florida clearly say these are to be heard by the Black Caucus statewide. That didn't happen. The last thing I'm going to say is, and this is what Mr. Owens tried to get out, Rod Smith, 2001, in this very same election, I endorse Paul Delaney and I'm urge sorry, all Democrats, inspired. Republicans, and all others to vote for her. This is the head of the Democratic Party of Florida who did not what these folks are. Mr. Chair, I'd ask that you enforce the rule. Oh, yes, indeed. Your time has expired. Mr. Weston. Carry on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the chance to speak briefly. Most of you know me. I'm the Precinct 20 Committee Chair. I also <coughs> served as Secretary of the Party from 1996 to 2000. I've served under five different chairs. Uh, Abby Goldsmith, Helen Strain, Chuck Floyd, uh, John Ryskin, and Robert. And I think that Robert is doing an extemporary job um, as, the, as the chair. He has the right to call for this investigation. And I'll, I, I, you know, I have many friends in the party, you know, some people will probably disagree, but the comment that I heard about a nonpartisan race to me, it just doesn't make sense. This thing, to be in charge is about judgment. And when we looked in the newspaper and saw a Republican being supported with a Democrat not there uh, at a Alachua County Democratic Black Caucus conference, that speaks to the purpose of our organization. I want to remind everybody, I didn't vote for Robert. Uh, it's, you know, it's written down in the, the, sl the slips that we voted for. I voted for Horace in the beginning, but I've supported every chair that has won. Robert is doing an exceptional job, and in this instance, while we need to forgive people that do things uh, that are wrong, we need to have some mercy and work with people. For a Democratic organization sorry, whose whole purpose is to elect Democrats to do what happened, Thank look you. foolish. And I, I think this nonpartisan race is not a good excuse. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I believe the meeting is adjourned based is on our previous motion and, and acceptance of that motion. Indeed, the uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Did he end the meeting? Yeah, they 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 already agreed. They agreed to uh, adjourn the meeting right there. Hey, what's happening with you? Hey, you're looking good, man. Where are you? Are you working yet? You look like you're working. Yeah, yeah. I'm going on the next election. I'm going in at the independence. Right. I can't go into the club. I like the old republicans. Right. The old school. This new school.
you've seen the, the, the Eisenhower Republic. They are. I think I think we're witnessing a major meltdown. <laughs> oh, who? Not the not you. No, not us. They're not you. No. It's a major meltdown. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and dissolve the solution. Um, what, one the thing I the solution that's melting down needs to be dissolved. One thing I just you probably already know this, but this letter doesn't say that the local Democratic Party advised them to return the donation. No. This this is a, a grievance to national. I'd like to get a count of that. So use that. It's all fluff, but we're fine. We'll be all right. I don't, I don't know why they ain't so much. I don't need it. I mean, they didn't have a problem writing a letter behind our back. Yeah. But, you know, they got a problem confronting them. Right. So, this, this issue mean, needs to go to national. Just go national. So, two minutes is what they gave. One minute for you and one minute for you. And that was it. That was it. 55 seconds. As soon as you got into the good stuff, they hit you. Good. Let's go. Okay, we got it. We're going to get an interview. Great. Great. Traps the off of it as a federal employee. Oh, you want to? Okay. No, I, I don't. They called me and said, I don't know if you get too deep in this thing as a federal employee. I say, well, I'm in it. And I'm fine. They said, okay. Stay away from the federal part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be cool. Okay, don't say I'll be cool. They ask you, I'll refer to you. Okay, I'll tell them. Okay, gentlemen. Yeah, man. Hey, how you doing? Well, it went just like I expected it to. Maybe even better. I think we've got a meltdown here going. We have a booklet that has a lot of stuff in it. I think Welcome to the meltdown. Hey, hey, meltdown. <laughs> I thought it was mud. I thought it was mud wrestling. I think they really got themselves up to their uh, earlobes. They got themselves up. I'm looking forward to it tomorrow night. All right. Very much. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks for coming. You know, we're, they're doing interviews. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see how they treat us when we come. Right. How's Miss Mina? She, she called me the other morning. She had a wonderful talk. <laughs> I heard a little bit of that. Let's go outside. <laughs> democracy is shut down, the people who shut it down are the ones who are hurt. It did not hurt us. They hurt themselves. And this is showing, this is going to show Gainesville just how arrogant these folks are. Right. right. I think you were stonewalled. <laughs> wow. Okay, we done got stonewalled. Oh, my name. What a... This is the real show of democracy. That was democracy. Maria. 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 Are you leaving the leaders? I know. I'm waiting. We've just been told about how good the other is. Done got stolen. This is great. I mean, this is really good. It is.
I it was, is. I was praying. I mean, they stepped in it with both feet. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was an outrage. That was arrogant. You know, I'm so happy. Have you ever seen that? They had the courage. Yeah. They had the courage to inflict a mortal wound of slitting their own throat. Have you ever heard that commercial where that little girl said, "Right"? And now I know why you. They slit their own throat. Yeah. I was going to plan. I, I had a map of plan. And I told to Have you ever heard that? Can everybody keep right. quiet down? It's an interview going to be interviewing. This can't be good. Where's Charles? Where's Charles at Irma? Last name Grundy, G R U N D Y. Okay, I'm not texting you, I'm taking notes. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you feel about the just went on, especially when we were going to talk about business. Well, what I feel about what currently went on uh, specifically is that normally uh, time parameters and protocol are that they give folks a little bit more time. This, this, this evening, they clearly gave uh, a minute of time frame, which is quite frankly out of the ordinary, and it, and it appeared to be very deliberate. Uh, what's more disconcerting about the entire matter is that no one from the Black Caucus, the Black Caucus did not endorse anybody. So the point that was being made by the chair was moot, number one. Number two is that individuals are free to do what they want, but we were being punished because clearly the facts in the letter that they articulated were not factual. That's also important to note. And uh, they clearly have made some derogatory, not only derogatory, but racist and bigoted statements um, out in public. Some of them are former elected officials. And it's quite frankly, it's shameful. It is very shameful. Uh Armando, you were one of the, maybe perhaps the last person on the mic, you didn't get to speak. If you would have had a chance to say something, can you tell our viewers that well, what would you have said? Well, what I would have said at, at, the, at the mic is that number one is that they, they made the argument that the Black Caucus had inherently uh, harmed Craig Lowe's chances of winning when, in fact, the, the, the data does not support that. Craig Lowe has won, has won every historically black district in Gainesville. That's a fact, important fact to know. So if, if they're stating that we significantly harmed it, that's, that's not accurate. We need to have accuracy and facts. And the facts are not supported by what they are stating in the letter. And they are trying to inherently diminish and affect our ability to have a, a caucus and govern ourselves. But this has affected the black community as a whole. And they, they have really caused the divide. The other thing that's important to note is that Commissioner, or excuse me, Representative Watson also pointed out the divide that they have. They have significantly caused us harm, and they've done it themselves. And I'm very ashamed of them. I'm ashamed of the local Democratic Party and the state party. Well, what do you think this uh, divide, this rift, where is this coming from? Well, it's been happening for many, many years. Number one is if, if we can go as recently as the year 2000. In the year 2000, during the election, you had the Congressional Black Caucus that when they stood up and said, they did not disagree. They wanted to disagree with the election. You didn't have one Democratic senator stand up and, and, and support that. Then clearly, from the state level on down, they have been taking the black level vote for granted. Blacks have been Democrats for many, many, many years. But our, there's been an issue of, of, of what quality comes down to. Clearly, certain communities are more important. People of color have not been important, which has been Hispanics, African Americans. Our, our issues are not important. The city's own legislation is not important. Many of the things that they do have harmed us. And most of these are quote unquote progressive Democrats. And we should all be Democrats. And they didn't even support, the example is they didn't support Clovis Watson. They didn't support Sherwin Henry. And that was clearly articulated. They didn't support, I mean, they didn't support we could list a litany of people and folks. You even had some folks in media who are standing to my right that didn't do some accurate things and were very dishonest, but they called themselves progressive. Many, many, many times you'd rather deal with a, a real blatant racist or somebody that is from the KKK than this liberal quote unquote ilk that is here. They are the worst kind. They are rotten to the board. They are rotten. They are really rotten. Thank you, Armando. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, Armando. Good job. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No problem. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks. Very good, Armando. Thank you. Can you put this on your Sure. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -h
Ray Washington, I'm a Democrat, a Oh, no, I thought you said Oh, well, good, good, everybody. Well, okay, Ray, and I'd rather you look at me instead of the camera. You can come out and meet a minute or so to speak, but you do pretty much finish your statement. What, what were some of the things that you wanted to talk about? Well, there was a request, and it was delivered in person to the Democratic State last week. And the same thing happened there. The steering committee tried to close the meeting down before the Black Caucus could make a request. And they ended up closing it down without responding to the request. The same thing happened tonight. Uh, there was a request that was made uh, early in the day. We were told that it would couldn't go past 8 o'clock. So they backed everybody against the wall. And then there were about five minutes at the end. And the question was really simple. Will you withdraw an irregularly uh, voted upon condemnation of the Black Caucus. It was never answered. There was never any intention to answer that question. And the most important thing to know is you treat all people equally. When you have the head, head of the Florida Democratic Party, uh, Rod Smith, who was the head last year, he just got out of office. He was a member of this DEC committee, and this is what he said. He endorsed a Republican candidate for the same race, the same race, the mayoral race of Gainesville. He endorsed a Republican over a Democrat. Now, there is a difference between Mr. Smith and the Black Caucus. Obviously, race is a difference. But there's another important difference. Mr. Smith had signed the loyalty oath. None of the people who they're trying to drum out of the party ever signed the loyalty oath. And the reason that they did not is because they didn't want to be under the boot of someone who wouldn't let them think independently. We have a nonpartisan race for a reason. The head of the state Democratic Party thinks it's okay to endorse somebody. But these folks, they're going over a cliff because of extremism. There are a lot of good Democrats in this county, a lot of good Democrats who believe in the Democratic Party's principles, but they do not believe in squelching freedom of speech, and they do not believe in abandoning the rule of law. And the law was not followed the way this operation operated. Right, let me ask you one last thing. Um, they, you're in the field of the camera. She's trying to get you out. She's having to move the camera to get you out. Yes, I can tell you that. I spoke with um, the head of the Judicial Council and explained the circumstances here, including the fact that what the Democratic Black Caucus is being approved of is the same thing that this group had no problems with the head of the state Democratic Party. The next day I got a call from him and he said, we're taking it off. We're not going to have it. So there will not be a hearing. The state, I think, realizes these folks have made a big mistake. And then we had a discussion about maybe the local DEC paying for the cost of running the, the room in Jacksonville and the court reporter to come to a hearing on a bogus, false, and improper uh, alleged uh, accusation is all this. They didn't follow the procedure. Now, it would cost a lot of money, and this is money that Democrats could be using to get our candidates elected in races that are Democratic races, not in nonpartisan races. And then finally, and I think it's very, very important to know this, finally, uh, the people in Alachua County, the good people of Alachua County who are Democrats, should not be a target for protecting themselves. The people of East Gainesville, where I live, by the way, I live in East Gainesville, I live in District 1, I, I have septic tanks. I don't have a tie into the, to the sewer. I don't have any natural gas. That stuff has to happen. And a mayor has been elected who has promised to do those things, to improve, improve the headways. And these folks want to say, we're going to just be the, the click, and we don't care what's going to happen to you in these games. Well, this is what's going to go on. People are tired of having their needs not met. And if it took that for the Democratic Black Caucus to do the right thing, they did the right thing. And it's not going away. The Democratic Black Caucus isn't cowed at all. They can try to shut them up. 
they can try to cut them off from speaking. There were more than two dozen people here tonight, and that's the respect they were shown. Two minutes and cut them off in the middle of their presentation, and not even the respect to answer their questions. I think they have revealed to the community that this is a dysfunctional executive committee, and it needs to be reformed. And that's where we're going to be headed. We're going to be going out to Tallahassee and have this charter out of the, out of the black box. Is that the next step? Could that, you reiterate that one more time? The, the Democratic Executive Committee of Gainesville has violated their own rules by not taking something to the grievance committee. They have violated their own rules by not taking their grievance to the Black Caucuses, the statewide officers. They violated their own rules by making allegations without even researching. Mr. Don Herget, who's the treasurer of this organization, who's a supporter of this thing, asked Mr. Herman Owens at the steering committee meeting, did you sign the uh, oil deal? And he said, no, I've never signed it. So they accused somebody who had not signed an oil deal without ever checking. And, you know, that is, uh, that's, that's libel. I mean, that is actual malice under the standards of, of libel law. He's a public figure, but if you have in your records the ability to know if he's a member of that caucus, but, but even that, it's outrageous. The head of the state Democratic Party did the same thing, and they patted him on the back, and they raised him to the head of the state. These people, African Americans, who are trying to stand up for their part of town, are penalized, and that kind of racism is long gone and should be. Thank you. Great. Let me grab the mic. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Charles. Mm -hmm. Charles. Mm -hmm. I just love to go to a place where you know, these people just slit their own throats, right? Yeah, it's like the Roman Colosseum. I've been trying to slit my throat for years. It was so easy. All I had to do was sit there and have to say a word. They did it all. Just get the raw footage. They'll give it to you. Well, it's hot over here, isn't it? It is. 
I'm going to go ahead. How are you, Charles? I'm doing good. I'm going to use the same word that on your back pocket. Okay. Hmm? It's getting ridiculous. I think, I think what's happening is that the, 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 the national spirit is, 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 has poisoned the local chapters. I, I think it's, it's coming down. It's coming down from the top. You can tell by the language. The words they use are right off of CNN. Black um, Rachel Maddow, uh, that genre of people. Well, I mean, today's meeting was to make more of the nature of the Democratic Party. Exactly. Many people are going to be able to do that. The president, after a while, was the first committee a couple days ago requested that we replace some of the pictures as we begin the tonight. They closed the meeting to make sure we were not on the agenda. And see, the basis that they're using all of this to either try to take the trial, but uh, we know that they can't, is because they profess that I said that I endorsed uh, Ed Braddock, which I did not do. And they would go back and get the entire footage, and not the edited part, that's used for the newscast, and you see in here clearly that I said we do not endorse any kind of thing. But based on the fact that we only have one person to show up, if we had to endorse, it would be by elimination. And that was basically what was said. But this is not something new. Uh, Evelyn Fox has been trying to do this ever since last year when we were sitting in a Black Caucus meeting and just talking about the platform of two candidates running for city commission. And somebody told her that we endorse somebody, and we can't do that. And so she had a special meeting with John Rice and myself and Irma Lawrence, and was talking about filing agreements, and we told her to do so. But if she did, we told her the consequences of filing agreements that would come back unfounded, she would have to definitely deal with those consequences for doing that. And tonight, we saw that we were not respected, there's no equality here, and that's all we're asking for, is that African Americans and other people be treated with equality in this party, they do not be taken for granted, and they, they do not be disrespected by one group because we do not agree with them and their ideology on certain things. Uh, and on the Black Caucus end, so what are you guys, what is the next step for you guys? What are you guys going to do? Well, I mean, our next step is going to be based on what their next step is, okay? Um, we have tried to come to them and come to some kind of amicable agreement with them. They rejected that once. Does that work? No, I'm saying they rejected it once and they rejected it twice. So we're not going to continue to, you know, run behind them and get some understanding. See, understanding can come in a lot of arenas. It does not have to come in this room here. It can come in some other rooms. And we may have to end up in another room to let them know that this will not continue. This is a 25-year-old dilemma that has been kicked around, supported by the FDP, supported by other people in uh, Alachua County and the city of Gainesville. And we just decided to say enough is enough. And that, that's why we're here tonight. Um, has the state Democratic Party uh, communicated with you guys, the local black office? Oh, yes, definitely. The, the state Democratic Party has dismissed the judicial hearing that they tried to get to pull our chart. Because once they went back and did the necessary research, they found out that what they wrote, uh, to whom it may concern letter, and I don't know who you send something like that to, and you know everybody else in Tallahassee, it was unfounded, once again. And I, and I repeat that any time that allegations, slanderous remarks, which have been made by Pagene Hanohan, been made by uh, all these other people who signed this letter without talking to us, all of our processes were totally eliminated. There was not a local grievance, there was not a state grievance with the Black Caucus that would have landed it in Tallahassee. All of that was abbreviated because they picked up the phone and called one of their buddies in Tallahassee who did not check what he should have checked or she should have. And they violated us. And I feel violated. Everybody in the caucus feels violated. And we're not going to accept that. Charles, my last question for you. If the uh, judicial hearing was dismissed, do you think this is the end of that? Do you think that uh, 
threat of the charter being revoked has ended? Well, I mean, for them to dismiss the hearing, they can't revoke it without a hearing. So we're going to do what we do, and we're going to base what we, you know, our understanding on what we have heard, uh, on what the Florida Democratic Party, you know, has conveyed to us. Uh, and like I said earlier, what's going to determine whether this ends or not is going to depend on those people who had the nerve in the dark behind everybody's back to sign a letter to attack Barbara Shaw, Juanita Hamilton, and myself. As if I'm not a person who uh, can speak in America, uh, under the First Amendment, uh, with freedom of speech, I don't have the right to choose, and they're telling me to do something that I never signed a loyalty oath in the first place. My only loyalty oath that I signed is with Jesus Christ. There is no other loyalty oath with me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When is this for broadcast tonight? Tonight at 11, yeah. Um, we have a student Good job. Good job, bro. 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 Good Okay. Um, but what time do you think? When do you need to buy um, I'm hoping to leave soon after I get some more quotes, but I'm, I mean, I'm going to be here, uh, I think, a little longer. I'll keep an eye on you. Keep an eye on me. Okay. Yeah, I'm about 10 minutes or so. Perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. Did you want to? No? Okay. No, I just well, want to listen to what they're saying. I'd like to. You'd like to? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I know there was someone else. I just forget faces. Is there anybody else who wants to speak? I don't remember now. No, okay. no. They did our work for us. I don't need to talk. I hope I gave you enough. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. I had quite a few people. There you go. There you go. Son, who's 14. There you go. He's been constituted since last year. Okay. Definitely. Yes. So I'll take him and then, Maria, did you still want to talk to me? Well, like, you're going to cut it up. you got so many people. Yeah, you got to know. Quite a few you guys. Look like yeah, you I, I think I'm irrelevant at this point. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I would like for you to get the coverage in the message is that what I, that I represent hundreds of people in the neighborhood that are Democrat that voted for Braddy. What you saw here tonight is a perfect example of how we, we got even worse treatment at the city. And we are, the base is being disenfranchised here. And people, Democrats, are calling me and wanting to register no party affiliation because of this type of behavior. It is appalling. It is not democratic at all. I don't care. Be Joe Beatty and I went to the Democratic Committee You're not on this last... You gotta go. Might as well be on camera. Last you sure you don't want to... Yeah. Yeah. It's hard camera. for me to remember everything. Just go, go on camera. camera. Okay. Okay. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Look, and then I won't forget you. We need somebody with an accent. <laughs> and somebody under I'm age 21. <laughs> and we need the opposition to speak. I want to see more blood. Maria <laughs> Parsons. Parsons, P-A-R-S-O-N-S. Okay. Um, Off-camera, Maria, you were telling me a little bit about how uh, Democrats are coming to you and they want to, you know, not Democrats anymore. Right. Well, well what you saw here tonight is a perfect example of what Democrats have been subjected to. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. You sure. feel disenfranchised when our time is cut short, our, our microphones are turned off, the lights are turned off. Meetings adjourn before it's time simply because they don't want to hear the voice, the Democratic voice. And uh, Democrats voted for Ed Brady at an incredible rate because of what is happening here. We feel disenfranchised by our own party. They are now reaching out to us. They are becoming uh, an autocracy. You know, God judge and jury 
and they decide when to, and whatever is good for, for uh, whatever is good for the goose is not good for the gander, especially on this issue with the Black Caucus, because this party has behaved and supported other candidates, ex done exactly what, is, what was done here by the Black Caucus, but yet that was not frowned upon, that was acceptable, so uh, it's um, uh, double standards here, and we've had enough of that. We need to have, to have democracy, we need to have peace in the party, and this behavior here tonight, where people were not allowed to voice their opinion, is not a democratic process. And uh, people are coming to me at an alarming rate, which I shared with uh, uh, Mr. Gildea, about wanting to register as no party affiliation because they're being disenfranchised. And the, the actions of the Democratic Party right now here in Alachua County is not inclusive and it's not democratic. Thank you. I know, last time I had to go look for you. <laughs> had to go to the bathroom. At the car. So I'm going to just give some Moral support. I just don't. I just don't. Well, that's a switch. That makes me feel like. No, he can't shut us up. All these women in one room. I thought I was doing. You'll never get silent. You were doing a great. I just don't like. I'm also going to get you from the shoulder up. Look at me instead of the camera, and then for the record, if I can have your first name and your last name. My name is Ben Morris. Can you spell out Ben B E N, right? Yes. M O R I S, right? Yes. Okay. I can say you're an Alachua County resident, right? Yes. And the student, how old are you? Uh, 14. 14. So you're in high school, right? Not yet. Oh, middle school, okay. Okay. Um, we've all been talking about the meeting. Uh, tell me, what, what, what are your feelings about what went on today? It was shameful. I really think it was shameful because, uh, you know, citizens were denied the right to speak. And, you know, it was something about really big, and they took time. They took extra time to just, the Democratic Executive Committee took extra time just to, you know, pat themselves on the back and say, you know, what a good job they were doing, instead of giving you know, people who are concerned about a serious issue to speak and, you know, not even give them an extra 30 seconds. They reduced the meeting five for um, five minutes. They reduced the meeting five minutes from 8 to 7.55. That, eas that easily would have been enough time for um, Mr. Washington and um, Mr. Uh, Owens to speak. And it was, about, it was about a serious issue. They were not the right to speak, and I just think it was really just shameful. And it, it, this isn't the Democratic Party that I know. Um, thank you, uh, Ben. And then uh, you've been following, have you been coming to meetings? And I'm come to a lot of meetings, but I have uh, seen a lot of it. And I've been, I went to both um, debates at the, well, I can't really call them debates because only one candidate was there. But uh, I went to both um, ones at the Democratic Black Caucus. I went to the four A's. I worked a lot with Ed Brady for this reason because city com this isn't just a one-time thing. This happens all the time at the Gainesville City Commission. And th this is why I supported Brady. I didn't get to vote for him, but this is why I supported him. And you consider yourself a Democrat, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ben. It shows itself over It's never lost to be like No, you want to talk? We need a model. I know, I know. Just, just copy Ben. <laughs> I just love it. The blood was all over the floor in there. I mean, it was self-inflicted. We couldn't have hoped for a better outcome. No, thank you. I'm glad you saw Bob at only 14, okay? I think Obama... Yeah. I think Obama's sending Kool-Aid down to the local...
first name and last name. I'm Debbie Martinez. Okay, okay Debbie. Thoughts step, on? Step back a little bit. If not, you're gonna, your face is going to look this big. He's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's, 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 He's the one that knows. <laughs> it's good that you're skinny. So. He's a director. Uh, Debbie, uh, thoughts on what went on today at the meeting? This is exactly why lifelong Democrats like myself no longer trust the DEC. And we've never trusted for the past three years our mayor and the city commission. And this despicable behavior in which they've treated some of the finest members of our community at the Black Democratic Caucus is reasons why the DEC needs to change. This meeting was held exactly like they hold the city commission meetings, and that's why the D Democrats are, are tired of this Democratic commission. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm sorry, but I'm going to be going this way because there's pretty good light here. Okay. I'm going to have you, I don't do it telling you, but just so I can take notes if I can have your first name and your last name and spell it out for me. It's Marna, Okay. Okay. And I can refer to you as the state of 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 well, I think the bottom line is that the Democratic Party's job is to help the like, Democrats to office uh, the leadership of the party, uh, follow uh, requests to investigate that resources of the party were being uh, used to support Republicans, which is against our rules. It was further found out that the leadership of the Elijah County Democratic Black Caucus for several cycles has been doing that. And so the chair was within his rights to request an investigation. I think uh, it's, you know, our party is not the legal one voters. We're not common cause. We're a partisan organization. Our job is to elect Democrats. So when leaders in our party are supporting another party, uh, it just doesn't it doesn't seem to make sense. And Marno, what do you tell those um, people perhaps in the black caucus that are saying, hey, you know, this election is not partisan. It doesn't matter if we support it. What do you think about that? Well, first thing I would say as a member of the DC is kind of that all elections are partisan. You know, we're, we're trying to elect people in our party. I understand that there are, there are laws that say you can be in any kind of a party, but the DEC's purpose is to elect Democrats to office. So no matter the circumstances of the election, if there's a viable Democrat, that's our job to elect Democrats to office. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And another thing maybe, you know, Perhaps uh, some Democrats, you know, specifically the Black Caucus members, have uh, expressed that they are, you know, bummed out at the fact that, for example, Mayor Hill oh, wasn't at their debate and Braddy was more supportive. And so it seemed that way. What do you think should should they have still given their vote to? Um, Unfortunately, the question of the debate is the clearest example of poor judgment of the Black Democratic Caucus. Without a Democrat being there, there shouldn't have been a debate. Why is the Alaska County Democratic Black Caucus holding a debate with a Republican there? It should have been rescheduled. No, I mean, I, the fact that he was at a fundraiser is irrelevant. It speaks to the poor judgment of the body. Thank you, Marna, so much. Is there anything else that you'd like? Okay. No, no. Thank you. I'm going to grab the mic from you. Everybody runs away. <laughs>